Here, go ahead and cold open for me. Okay. Hey, welcome to the Couch on Fire podcast. The Couch on Fire podcast. Yes, where two dads just sit down and talk about pretty much every damn thing there is to talk about. All right. I was like, yeah, okay. I'm rolling, by the way. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Hey, <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Anyway, so uh, how you doing, Alex? You doing good? Uh, how was your weekend? How was Mother's Day? Um, well, Mother's Day was uh, matronly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you do... <laughs> so, uh, did you do any... <laughs> I uh, went over Dom Pablo's with my mom, who can't eat anywhere else. Any holiday, oh, any man. birthday, any anniversary, any anything, it's got to be Dom Pablo's. Uh, da- so I miss Dom Pablo's. <laughs> uh, you guys got Chevy Chase down there in Charlotte, right? Yeah, yeah, we got we got it's a, close a lot equipment. more. Yeah, we got a lot more Mexican joints that we you guys did up you know up in Baltimore, but. Don Pablo's, I don't know what it is. Those uh, sopapillas just get me. Sopapilla. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's too rich for me. Like, ugh. yeah, I have like a I... bowl of berries than that sugary butter mess. Well, there's a reason why I'm diabetic, so <laughs> I blame Don Pablo's. <laughs> anyway, you so that's cool. See so what. <laughs> so you want the so you want the Don Pablo's? That's awesome. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, I, I'm I'm bored of it. That, that's the thing. Yeah. Like I, I'm just. It's every fucking holiday. It's every time. Every time. We gotta go to Don Pablo's. I love you, mom. But can we pick somewhere else, please? <laughs> please. There are other mothers here. Well, is, she, is it just a cuisine that she likes there, or is it just that style? Because there's so many Mexican She just wants joints. the fajitas every time. It's the fajitas and the margaritas. Well, you know, Chili's heats up the bowl, too, and they bring it to the table like Don Pablo's. You know, like I did not start my timer. The timer has now started. We are set for 30 minutes from now. Uh, welcome to the grand Perfect. opening episode with a bonus four minutes of content or some shit. <laughs> there we go. Whoops. Absolutely. Hey, how you doing? Inaugural episode. Ha, 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 ha. So, um, so how was your Mother's Day, Rob? <laughs> uh, you know, my Mother's Day was good. Um, we really, I actually, uh, we, I just worked. I think that was it. Yeah, m- my wife and I both worked. That was pretty much it. See, we leave on Thursday to go to Charleston, South Carolina for vacation. So we were like, let's not buy. Well, like, she was like, don't buy me anything. I was like, okay. So we didn't go out to eat or anything. We just hung out here. Um, she worked in the morning. I worked in the evening. And... Yeah, I mean that was pretty much my Mother's Day you with her. So. Worked alternate <laughs> shifts so that neither of you saw each other on her. Uh, well, so so she works in the morning, but when she gets home, I see her for like an hour or two, and then I go to work. So technically, I did not see her on Mother's Day, but I had off yesterday. Well, no, I worked yesterday, but I had off today, so I do get to see her a little bit. And I'm about to see her going to Charleston, so you know. I'll see her all the time. I live with her. I can't fucking get <laughs> away from her. <laughs> it's, just, it's not. A, it's not a bad. It's not a bad situation. You said it. Kristen. <laughs> yeah, he no, said it. Uh, it was me. Nah. That was me. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but no, it was good. Oh, we did start something new though. Uh oh. We actually started uh, about three days ago. We started a new diet. Um. So as as I don't know if anybody's aware, I'm a type two diabetic, and I. This is our inaugural episode. Who the fuck is going to know? <laughs> well, people that know us, like, personally. Well, that's the extent <laughs> of it. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, I guess, I guess. But, yeah, so I'm a type 2 diabetic. I am horrible type 2 diabetic. Like, I don't check my sugars. I don't do anything I'm supposed to do. And, you know, recently my health issues have been getting worse. So my wife and I decided to go on this diet, and it's called the keto diet. Oh, you guys going keto, Jack? Yeah, so we started Props, it man. about – we started about two days ago, and I'm starting to feel like the my body's going through that transition where it's like uh, I feel kind of sick, but I'm not really sick. I'm just kind of oh, down and out. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, called keto. You. It's called ketosis or something ketosis. like that. I think it's called keto. Yeah, ketosis. ketosis. 
So it, yeah, y- your body is not anywhere near used to what you're doing to it right now. So it's in panic mode. Yeah, it yeah. will balance out over time. But oh, I know. You're you're in steep panic. Vegans go through the same thing. People who go full yeah. carnivore go through the same thing. Any steep diet change like that, you're gonna your yeah. body's like whoa, 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 and freaking the hell out. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, sorry. and honestly, no, dude, it's that's what's going on right now. Like so, but it, it, this will pass. I know it will. It's basically you know my body just has to adjust from eating carbohydrates and sugar to fat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's basically what it it all the, the diet is so you know it's just we've been we've been watching videos and stuff about how it's been helping people out and things like that and you know hey it never hurts to try and i love meat and i love fat and if i can eat all the meat fat that i can then fuck it right well i mean it's it's not a full atkins or anything it's like a hybrid between no. atkins and um uh, uh, uh paleo uh, like mm-hmm. carbs are bad. Carbs, carbs are way bad, but like, oh yeah, primary foods, get your, get your meat, predominantly mm. meat, but vegetables and get your, get your damn nutrients as well. Um, uh, and try to keep your carbs, uh, like your vegetables as complex as possible chemically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so like your hard, dark leafy greens, but try to avoid them. Um, em- emphasis on like beans, uh, uh, no apples. Ap- apples bad. Yeah. Uh, well, there, there, like, um, there's so like when I say so, part of this diet, it it says that like okay, so carbs are bad for you, but there's actually certain you can still technically have carbs, but it's only it's a certain type of carbs, it's and it's only carbs, yeah. literally little little bit like fifteen grams of it, you know, like yeah, or twenty like grams, a, a, and a sandwich is way <laughs> past that margin. <laughs> Dude, we I, I so last night I got extremely hungry and I was like, man, I want a I want a burger. I want like a bacon cheeseburger from like Wendy's. So she went to Wendy's. I didn't eat the buns, right? Yeah, you, so you just we, take the buns off. You're good to go. Yeah, we looked up the buns, dude. They're like three hundred, um, three hundred like, I, I, I exactly. And you know how much the hamburger was with bacon? I think eight. Tops. <laughs> like, At the top end, and that that's like the fry oil they're using on their fucking fry plate. <laughs> Yeah. So it's just, it's, 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 I don't know. It's just crazy. But anyway, so that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing is uh, trying this new thing out and it's, it's cool, but you know, it does hurt, but I'm going to be honest, my house. Rob, I, I was not ready to jump into something so controversial and divisive as diet <laughs> on our inaugural episode. You're like, save the politics for later. I'll just talk about listen, diet. Listen. Yeah. Now the vegans are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> listen here. Okay. Listen, I've 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 personally known me vegans. I've personally met, but I know a lot of vegetarians, and I, you know I've seen things, and I've watched documentaries on Netflix about juicing and all these other things. Grow, you know, in the past like five or ten years, and um, but this one documentary she just showed me, I think it hit us hard because um, since my daughter is autistic, and in the documentary they started giving autistic kids are starting to do the keto diet because it's basically like it, I, it, I don't know it's hard to explain you would have to watch it um but it's it's something crazy because it's like you know if anybody knows anything about autism it's it's not it's horrible and especially if they're severe like they don't listen i mean there's so many things that are not talking but once they put these kids on a diet after like two weeks their their motor skills are amazing the leaps i mean leaps ahead of whether you know they're colleague not their colleague their uh protege yeah. if you want to say your peers, peers there you go yeah where their peers would be so it's it's just i think that's where it hit hard and that's why me and her were like let's do this and then one thing that i love about my wife and i is this we do things first before we involve my daughter so we're going to do it first and make sure it's safe and then we're going to start doing it for her you well, know work so. out the bugs and stuff uh, oh yeah because you can't do test case on a kid like that, that I, i'm sorry that that is it's pushing on abuse like we we know ketogenic is a survivable diet you, you're not going to do lasting damage or anything is but yeah determining what the effects are going to be doing test cases on children is unethical in the extreme <laughs> oh yeah so good on you for starting with you two first uh props on the positive change holy shit like that's awesome 
Um, it's it's dude it's <laughs> so i've been reading nutrient facts now like when i go to the grocery store i can't everything eat is nothing carbs. Seriously, e- nothing everything like, is carbs 90 percent si- of the american diet is like high fructose corn syrup co- yeah. corn or wheat and that's mm-hmm. it that's that's 90 percent of the american yeah. diet and oh no i know <laughs> th- this was based on bad data gathered in the 50s uh, yeah. In, in a post-starvation mode America, like everybody was in this hard, like clench time because of the mm-hmm. war. I've got an intruder in the studio. <gasps> Say hi, my darling love, Ari. Hello. Come, come on. Come on. Oh my. <laughs> I need to open the garlic. <laughs> Inaugural episode. I need to open the garlic. There we go. And that's. <laughs> That, and that's what we're for. <laughs> Dad power. All, all bullshit aside, we're on, we're here to kill bugs. We're here to open garlic. I do flying stingers. <laughs> I do not do flying stingers. I'm hyperphobic. And like it, it's it's like a literal phobia. It like I freeze, I lock the fuck up, I can't handle it. Uh we had hmm. a wasp come in uh, a few weeks ago. It just we were sitting on the couch, minding our own business, hanging out with the dogs. Just talking, shooting shit, playing on our phones. And this thing floats up from the like where our feet should have been. If our feet weren't on the table or the couch. You know? And it, it yeah. floats up and I'm like, oh fuck. Oh god no. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I freak the fuck out. I run the fuck out of there. Uh it was a goddamn wasp. It, it was a fu- Oh um, my god. Uh, uh the 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 bright yellow bands. Yeah. That wasp like the specifically. Hornets? Hornets? Uh, is it a hornet? No, it, no, it wasn't hornet. as big enough to be a hornet. Okay. It was a wasp, but it was uh, the one with the bright yellow bands. Uh, mm. Bollocks if I know what the species or genus, but it, it bastard, bastard fucking wasp. Uh, and we, we caught her on the couch under some Tupperware yeah. after we had like trapped her under a shoe and Ari realized she couldn't like smush the thing into the couch because it was soft and squishy. And yeah. wasps, uh, little does mo- do most people know, uh, can be run over by cars and continue walking. It's the physics of their exoskeleton and the size of their body. So, like, run over by a car? Totally fine. Put smushed into a couch by a shoe? Eh, who gives a shit? So, so we switch out the shoe for the Tupperware. I, I'm head to toe, like, niqab, it... it the fucking all all you can see is my eyes just just yeah. gazing out of clothing <laughs> and we switch Ma- oh we got the kiddo Uh-oh. marco i am recording Polo. did did your mother not tell you not to come in while we're recording you, Polo. you got a scram you got a scram marco polo i love you buddy close the door on your way out i'll check it out later mm. you wanted to show me the kid's a video game photographer, I swear to God. He finds these, like, stills, and he'll get into a position where he can take a legitimate photo on the video game. Uh, 3DS and uh, the Switch, for some reason, include this capability. It's for, like, ah, yeah. you share it on Facebook, everybody will love it, bah! It, but he's doing, like, legitimate video game photography. He gets, like, these really intricate and complex shots, and we're trying to gather them up and do a blog here soon. Dude, that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's a really cool talent for a six-year-old to have. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, he's going to have a portfolio before he's... But he fucking shows me every five goddamn seconds. (laughs) I love him to death. I I love him to death. So just (laughs) reel that in, buddy. (laughs) You got to reel that one in. (laughs) Oh, uh, man, that is... The the Wasp, like, that that was a two-hour ordeal. I could not handle it. I'm not... I'm not capable of that. Spiders, scorpions, rats, snakes. I don't give a shit. Centipedes, whatever. I, I've had See, worse. Can't do flying stingers. Can't do it. See, I, I, think it's, I think it's crazy that, you know, like, like you know these certain bugs might not hurt you, but if they're crawling on you, you flip out. Like, I flip out. Certain bugs, like if an okay. ant's crawling on me. I, I'm like flipping out. I don't know why, because it's like in my space. Risk, you're good to go. You're done. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it is about me. I just get kind of like ugh, the EBGBs. With 
you know, even though I know it's not going to hurt me, like a centipede or something, I'm like, oh, no, no, centipedes will. Yeah. Millipedes won't. Centipedes are actually okay. highly venomous. Oh, okay. Depending well, on the species, of course. But <laughs> like most, your garden variety centipede, uh, especially on the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, the Mid Atlantic region, uh, they're pretty venomous. That they're not black widow or brown recluse venomous, but that they, they, they'll mess you up. Yeah. That's just nuts. That's yeah, nuts to yeah. Me, so. uh, the, the weird things you learn in Boy Scouts. <laughs> so, oh, what's that crawling on me? Oh, it can fuck me up. Oh, let's, let's get that out of here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here, that keto. This. That is. <laughs> well, I, hey, you know, bugs are good for the keto diet. I'm just saying. Actually, <laughs> uh, you hear about this cockroach milk shit? What? Okay, so <laughs> it's it's. Uh, they're doing the same thing with uh, grasshoppers. Um, uh, yeah, grasshoppers, I think. Well, one, of, one of the, the hoppy grass bugs in any event. And um, no, it is crickets. It's crickets. It's, it's crickets. It's probably both. Shit. Fuck if I goddamn know. Uh, but I do know that they're doing this. And they're setting up uh, for cockroaches, uh, the grasshoppers, crickets, and the like, quickly reproducing uh, bugs. You could set up like these little farm setups that'll uh, grind them up and turn them into like the dry version of almond milk. Like where, where as yeah. as almond milk is to milk, cockroach milk is to milk. S same core concept, like pseudo milk. You're, you're getting some lactic acid. You're getting some lactose, uh, etc. But it's it's derived from this animal instead of almond or or you know from a cow or a person or yeah. mammal um and, but you like these farm things will s churn out this this dry powder version of it and like you can add water and, or to milk straight up and get like this mega dose of protein um if you throw it in chocolate like obviously you're gonna get the endorphin rush it, it's it's really weird what people are doing with bugs for food now because well, see, ah, resource shortage. We'll we'll be fine. We'll figure it out. <laughs> vertical it's just, vertical farming, like Jesus Christ, relax. Well, like localize the just, farms it, in the cities. It's just it's just weird to me because like thinking about you know stuff like that, like um, one of the things that I was reading about the keto diet. It's also it's it's basically you're just going back to what it used to be. Like that's all you're doing. You're literally going back to what the world used to be Ish. before. Kind, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So there's some modifications yeah. to the paleo to make it keto, uh, ketogenic rather than uh, yeah. like the paleo strictly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But I can see the whole bug thing too because, like, imagine like you know, forty thousand years ago, you're just walking in your village, you know, you're just you know eating meat, you're eating vegetables that you grow, uh, you're eating the shit out of bugs. I mean, you don't know these things. You're like, oh, what is this? This looks, it's moving, but I'm gonna eat it because I eat this buffalo who's moving. And it tastes good, so it's just kind of like I can I can see the whole bug thing. I mean, I wouldn't do that, but you know, the Homo sapiens sapiens like us as we exist now have been around for what a hundred thousand years. And we can only account for ten thousand years of that history, give or take. Back to yeah. Gobli uh, Go Gobleki Tepe, uh, that mm -hmm. monument. What the hell were we doing? Like we had to have traditions and cultures in our villages. Yeah, like even even like in hunter gatherer societies that we still exist today, by the way, uh, we still see tradition and culture, and they know what they can and can't eat. So like th that had to exist at one point, <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. Uh, like chimps know what they can and can't eat, and like chimps and bonobos alike like they'll, they'll eat termites they'll they'll eat each other uh they, they, oh, our, our our genetic relatives are so weird so weird mm. the bonobos any conflict they have resolve it with sex chimps any conflict they have it it, it doesn't matter how menial kill the other tribe I mean, that literally sounds that this literally sounds like my relationship with my wife. I don't mean any conflict. <laughs> you said God. that one. You said that one. I, I did, did not. I did. 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 You know. Anyway. Whoops. So. <laughs> but, 
but basically okay anyway yeah um what so besides the keto diet i know um we were talking about that um we i did go to the movies friday and saw avengers for the third time why um now why would you do that to yourself so i don't feel well mr stark (laughs) spoilers right you know you gotta say that don't you or honestly by this time i I think the whole world's seen the movie i don't feel well (laughs) isn't a spoiler it's a quote sure but we're not given enough context to place it well i'm about to tell everybody everything everyone dies you said spoilers already, so I guess we're clear. <laughs> Sorry. So now but no, we're all the, right, so... the, the nerds <laughs> and the vegans <laughs> coming for our heads. Awesome. Well, I, I thought it was like so I saw it for the third time because um all right, so I saw it for the first time. I was like, Oh, this is a great this is a great movie. By the way, side note, basically, no matter if you like this movie or not, this movie pretty much just buried any hope for DC to make any movie. I mean, you know, there was already Neil's in the coffin with the Avengers and you know, Age of Ultron and all that other good stuff. Ten out of ten but, would agree again. Like I hate it. Like I, I grew up. I grew up watching the Green Lantern. I grew up watching Batman, and I love them. But Bruce the way and John Stewart are some of the two coolest characters in DC. And, and uh, f- fuck Hal Jordan for a second. Like seriously. Oh yeah, like, I know. He, I agree with you dick. on that one. Uh, John Stewart's by far the coolest Green Lantern. Uh, but holy crap, DC can't get its shit together. Like I, I Cinematically. just so, comics, they're, no. they're doing great now. Oh no! Oh, I agree. I agree. You know, it's funny because like I, you know, I was reading an article and they were talking about how like the eighties, no, the sixties, the eighty, the sixties, seventies, eighties, and nineties were pretty much like it's Superman, so Batman, Superman, Batman. It was DC. Mm, you know, mm, mm, I mean, mm. you saw the Incredible Hulk had a TV show back in the day, and I understand that, and they had some things, but cinematic and televised maybe it was dc absolutely but comics well, like the silver age both parties were there yeah uh, well but dc Marvel... was more expansive that's the thing they they justified their expanded uh they they kept expanding like there's the dark justice league which got yeah. most consisted mostly of vertigo characters uh there there's the all the image stuff that came in DC did run the show, but like Marvel has overtaken. Well, the thing the thing is, so Marvel basically fell. He like stand like they he filed for bankruptcy. Basically, Marvel almost didn't make anything after the nineties. Like they pretty much were like shit. They were then, insolvent there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Then out of nowhere. You know, Fox. So they sold they sold rights to Fox. They sold rights to you know all these different companies. Obviously, the obviously, afloat. yeah. Obviously, DC. I mean, not DC. Obviously, Disney got a big chunk of it. Obviously, um, but eventually, like you know, they started making movies. The first the first Spider Mans were good. I, I mean, I liked them. The one you know, like what was it, it was a Tony Tony McGuire. Uh, Tony Toby McGuire. Fun I fan liked the, theory. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh god, here so, we go. So in the comics universe, there is the the Spider Verse, right? Yeah. We've already got it in the cinematic universe. Yeah. Toby, Garfield, and now Tom Holland. We we have three Spider Men across different timelines that all had different origins and slightly different variations and all that. It's the Spider Verse made manifest in the cinematic universe. Wow. It, totally unintentionally. But I think it's wonderful. And this is, uh, to my knowledge, uh, breaking. Nobody else has talked about this. Really? We're all just like, ah, we'll ignore Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Tom Holland's our guy. Well, he, okay, so he's the primary guy. That doesn't mean the other ones didn't exist. They do. They yeah. actually do. And that justifies the whole Spider-Verse thing. Uh, I want to see a Spider-Gwen movie. I think that would be okay. awesome. Uh, no Gwenpool, uh, cinematically. Thank you. That no. that's crossed the line. <laughs> but, I honestly don't. I don't even want to see this Venom movie. Yo, that looks good. See, I, I, to me it doesn't. So I don't. I don't Tom know. Tom Hardy. See, I like Tom Hardy as an actor. I think he's great. I I liked the. I just. I don't know. It's just the symbiote. Like the way it was talking to him was great. But I don't know. It just. It seemed. 
the trailer didn't do it justice. So hopefully it's a good movie. But I don't know if I want to see it as of right now. I think so. I think it's going to pan out. Sony okay. has kind of figured out the do's and don'ts by now. Uh, they're getting a lot of dir- inner direction from Marvel uh, yeah. because of Tom Holland specifically and his interaction in the MCU. Uh, they're they're catching half the profits from uh, yeah. Homecoming and Homecoming Two, like that. That's a beautiful intercompany marriage to support that character. They're getting the same kind of direction from Marvel for Venom. Mm-hmm. They're going their own way, but they're making sure they're not stepping on anything as they do so. So that it can fit okay. into the broader MCU canon, uh, even as it belongs to Sony and doesn't necessarily yeah. interact with the the grand scheme of like the Avengers and Captain Marvel, Black Panther and all that. But we're still going to see some crossovers. Like, we'll, we'll get a... I hope we get a good Carnage movie. Holy oh, shit. Oh, well, see, Carnage, I, you know, that's just... Terrifying. It, tox, I like Toxin, Carnage. I mean, you can... The list Toxin's goes on. Toxin's awesome. Like, like, I like Toxin for a very different reason. It's the, the, the black and white, the Knights of Ren kind of gray yeah. Jedi scenario. Mm-hmm. That's why I like Toxin. Carnage is disturbingly frightening. Yes. Well, see, like, I was talking to a, a, a guy that I work with about, like, anti heroes just getting movies and becoming popular, and I think it's great. Like, yeah. I, I, so Hollywood needs that. You know, and yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I agree 100%. It, it, I agree. It's, it's better anti hero movies than them all fucking raping each other all the time. Mm-hmm. I feel like. <laughs> 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 just go walk right I, into that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> Boom, uh, Harvey Weinstein is a joke. <laughs> so, uh, what a piece of shit. You know, I, with this whole with this whole Avenger thing, you know, I when I saw it the three times, the first time, you know, I really, you know, I really wanted to see it. Obviously, the second time, I just wanted to see if I missed something. The third time was just more of like a. It was the movie ticket was only five bucks. Down here in the let's, if you go in the enjoy, mat, matinees, yeah, 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 yeah let's, let's just, enjoy the matinee you know, journey. I just take it in one I, more I, time. I love that our generation, or like, just I love that th- this is like nerd central right now. The last couple of years have been nothing but n- nerd stuff everywhere. I mean, you got Stranger Things on Netflix, you got Star Wars everywhere, you got Star Trek movies, you got all these nerd things that have been happening in the last like eight years, and it's amazing. I love Stranger it. Stranger Things nerd specifically well, I don't, okay i would take it because the song of ice and fire like the game of thrones stuff yeah that, that's yeah. pretty nerd and it broached into the mainstream stranger things has always been mainstream from jump it deals well, with some the, nerdy stuff i think that's what i, I was don't think it's probably explicitly nerd well maybe it's not but it, it seems like it's just it's trying to be like like the story is based off of dungeons and dragons in an alternate universe kind of thing and yeah. So I feel like that that's the only like real it, – it, it's trying to be nerdy, but I agree it is definitely a mainstream thing, which is crazy because when when new shows on Netflix come out, no one really – a lot of times I don't watch them. I don't really do. I'm like, oh, whatever. And then you start hearing something about it, like I'll give it a shot. And um, yeah, I mean now it's like it's like a ritual. Every October you're going to be watching Stranger Things. Like I, if, I, I, I haven't picked it up yet. I'll be honest. Um, um, it's – you would like it. It's fun. It's literally the Goonies. It's the Goonies, yeah, it's the Goonies with, with with monsters. monsters. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I'm good. You know, like it, I'd rather watch but, Ready Player One, I, and I haven't seen yet, that yet either. I haven't seen that one yet either. So you know, it's hard for me to go to the movies because like my wife can't go because we can't take my daughter, um, because of her autism and she's only three too, and uh, we can't really take her. Um, so if we go to the movies, I have to go by myself or she has to go by herself. So she hasn't seen a movie in a long time. I think the last movie she saw was probably, let her see a fucking movie, Rob, (laughs) give her the opportunity. I would like to see movies with her. I think, oh, I think she saw Star Wars. I don't know. The first, the Force Awakens, the Force Awakens. So here in like three years. Because yeah, finding a babysitter is fucking difficult, especially especially in your scenario. Uh, yeah. 
But, like, here in three years, go to the movies together. And try, but give her more opportunities in the meantime. Oh, yeah. Well, like, I um, I tell her all the time, she she can leave the house anytime she wants. I don't want to have control over her, and she did, you know, it is what it is. She can do whatever she wants. Um, it's just, we're just, since we live down here in Charlotte, we don't have too many, like, uh, friends and family down here. So what we do is we just spend, I mean, she's my best friend. We just spend a lot of time with each other. And, uh, yeah, we, we will go to the movies. It will happen, and hopefully before Avengers uh, 17 when that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Where but we've got no, zombie I mean, cap walking around. <laughs> but yeah, so I just, I just, I mean, I'm just loving all this geek stuff because I'm, you know, I'm a geek at heart. I know you're a geek at heart. We, I mean, there's just, I'm, I mean, I'm in my room right now and I have geek stuff everywhere. So it's like, you know, all these movies coming out are great. I just, I really, I eventually, I think Marvel will, will oversaturate it. And maybe maybe in five or six years, and it'll just be like, oh, okay. Well, now let's let's start watching DC. You know, um, hopefully the torch will go over. But by then they'll remake Batman for the 80th time. They'll remake Su- Superman. They'll remake all these you know characters. And I'm just I don't think anybody's gonna want to spend any money on DC movies. You don't I, think so? No. By that by that time, I I think that that bridge is gonna have been burned. Um, we've got. I'm not going to say it's their best attempt. I, I can't yeah. say that by any stretch. Oh, but they I, they put think... bad directors and bad writers at the helm because of Warner Brothers. Yeah. Uh, I do blame Warner Brothers for this explicitly, but I I don't I don't see anybody trying to spend any money on it afterwards. Uh and mm-hmm. if Warner Brothers continues like they're just going to keep beating the same dead horse and it's going to die harder and harder and harder and i i like the individuals yeah uh, uh batfleck like by far the coolest bruce wayne yeah he's, he's pretty Arnold. cool uh like he he's the bruce wayne i want christian bale is the batman i want uh but just... like gal gadot as wonder woman like that that was perfect casting Perfect well done. Casting. Uh, honestly, but, I, honestly, honestly, um, Aquaman. I feel, I feel like that's a good casting. I just feel like bad writing, and bad. <laughs> it just hopefully that movie is okay, but it's just bad writing, and you don't like him, do you? What is his name? I don't even remember. His Jason name. Momoa, dark and edgy I Aquaman. Just, <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna tell you this right now. I feel like certain people were made for certain roles in life. And that I, I don't. His. That's not his. And honestly, in, in Game of Thrones, he he did well in Game of Thrones. But I feel like his role, his role in life is to play Kratos. And if they ever make a God of War movie, yes, because yes. the way he talks, they look, they they can he can portray him in a heartbeat. <sighs> and the way he talks, it's just it's like, you know, it's like he talks, boy, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, have, you haven't played it. Oh, nope. it's so good. Nope. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's so it's so good. All right. All right. What happened? All right. We hit the marker. That's it for the our 30... first episode. Oh, okay. That's our first nice. episode wrapped. Oh, there you go. Thanks for joining us everybody. Uh we'll catch you on the flip side. Absolutely. Fight. See me. ya. <laughs> <laughs>